530. I suppose we can call the meeting to order. All right, we'll start with roll call and to see if we have a quorum. Mike Hanna, present. Greg Campbell, present. Dan Maddox, present. Dave Cravens, present. All right, looks like we have a quorum. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, look for a review of the minutes from August 1st. Anyone have anything they'd like to discuss? All right, if not, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Motion. All right, thank you. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Okay, all in favor of the minute, approving the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, next, uh, next up, we've got some old business to review. Um, we've got the business park trail. Scott? Okay, so um, if we could go to that spreadsheet, Stephanie, the 20 year plan. So um, we had a lot of asks um, last time, and um, so we stopped at the business park trail because you wanted to see how that was that would affect the finances. And then so we've got the twenty year tip plan, and it's only good for like the next year. I mean, it's really only this year <laughs> as it gets out. There's some the the plan shows things that we know for sure, right? Expenses from bonds, expected mm -hmm. revenues. It doesn't show the JD kid um, expected revenues because we don't know how that's going to play out, right? It's all going to be dependent on how fast he develops <coughs> and how successful that is. Excuse me. So, you know, don't look past 24. <laughs> uh, then we have some hard costs down there on other expenditures like uh, legal 67th Street design, but then if we could scroll down a little bit, these we try to list all the projects that we have. I've added a few. Um, the business park trail, the ask is for 30 this year, the remaining of this year, 50 next and 200,000 the next. And that's for 20% of a 1.2 million dollar contract for the design of the roughly 14 million dollar trail with the pedestrian crossing that's going to go connect the business park all the way to the downtown um so that's our first ask and that was the old business um from last year and then it, it, if you look then you start to see the construction in 27 27 and the most that we can get from the um, MPO, which is fine. We don't want, um, they give us 80%, our 20% is 250,000, which is fine, very digestible. Um, we'd hate to cough up 20% for 14 million all in one year, right? So it's phased out. Uh, but anyway, this is for the design ask. Uh, for the design that's the ask um so if i could i can go on and talk about um some other asks that we have and to flesh out the 2024 if it's okay to go into to new business so um we're gonna do some town hall repairs it's roughly gonna be um what's that about uh, 131,000. We got a $50,000 grant. So the town's cost is going to be 81,000. And then we divide that cost sharing a 70% um, electric, 10% water, 10% general fund, and 10% uh, the RDC. So that ask today is 8,100. And then uh, we have another ask for the comp plan, but this is for 2025. But we thought we'd go ahead and ask it now because we the work is gonna start uh, fairly shortly. And that's 35,000. And then the next one is Tyler Martin survey. And what that is, is you know, the town leases the the Tyler Martin parking lot. There's roughly 38 spots. 
if you look at the building on the other side, there's a space between that and the art gallery, Elton Art Society. A little breezeway mm -hmm. through there, yeah. So we have talked to him. He's going to rearrange. He's going to take down that overhang. Move. We're going to move the um, his ATM, create some more space. And his long-term plan is to build a building where that currently is via exit out of the parking lot. So um, that parking lot, well, when that happens, there'll still be public parking and, um, you know, but it'll all be through the alley. So part of the arrangement is that he is going to basically donate an easement, which is the width of that gap between the two buildings. So that would be where people can walk in to the parking lot in anticipation in the future when he builds that building. Um, so he'll still own the land, it'll be an easement, but we'll fix it up, make it look like a little trail. The art society wants to hang some art on that wall. Um, so it's a really, really nice downtown project. So <clears throat> that ask all comes to 71 thousand so <laughs> the important thing to know is that for if you look on this sheet here which is your appropriations for this year we appropriated for tiff projects two hundred twenty thousand, and then also at the bottom one there's a 67th street extension which is not hardly going to be tapped in at all this year. I think that we've only spent $360 out of it. There's just not a lot of activity with that project. Um, there may be some in the future, but right now it's, um, there's nothing going on. So between that project mm -hmm. and the general projects list, that's 280 leaves us roughly with 71, Karen and I, the ask today is 71. We roughly got 75. We may have to dip into our cash reserve, and that's roughly about 1.3 million for 20 or 30,000. The reason that is, is for the design on the business park trail, the way NDOT works with that and how it's administered is that you have the the local government has to pay the 100%. And then once they prove that you paid it, they reimburse you 80%. So there'll be a cash flow issue, right? So for the business park trail, 25% is the 30,000. So I can't do the math all of a sudden. So that's roughly 90,000 that we'll have to pay out, but we'll get back. We don't, Karen and I don't know if we'll get it back in time for the 2024 fiscal year. So if we dip into that cash, we try to we try to not have to do that because we appropriated, but we may have to do that. And then that'll just be an action with the town council asking for that additional appropriation. But just know that it will go right back into the savings. Right. So um anyway, so Long story short, now we can break it back down and and talk about each one of these projects with, of course, the business park trail being the first as since it's own business. The if you want to know why we don't do project specific, because we don't know projects, especially specific post-COVID, the costs can swing wildly. There's always something, some surprise for us in town. It's always more keep finding rock wherever we dig, but the projects cost more. So instead of, we just lump, put it all in one lump sum, plus the other thing that I think is very important, and that's the strength of the RDC is where you have pop-up opportunities. You've already appropriated the money. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Scott, would you um, explain 
I understand like the, the first 30,000 for the business park trail design, but then the, the uh, allocation in 25 and 26, the 50, and then the 200,000, what where, where are those funds yeah. going to be going for? So that's all only for just, just for design. Okay. So the 30,000 mostly right now is for survey, which is obviously the first step. And then, um, Part of that too is the constraints about how much money they're willing to give us and in, and in what year. Um, you would think maybe 25 would have the biggest chunk of design, but um, that's basically the, the way it, it's going to work out. Um, if, so if me... Anna was here, she could tell you to the T what, what, but I definitely know the thir first 30,000, it's gonna be for survey. So the ask for now is 30,000. For this year is 30,000, 25, 2025, it's gonna be 50. And then, and we can do it all today. And then in, so 24, 25, 26 is 200,000. Is that historically how that's been done? Like we've made, we would make a commitment for two or three years in the future, like on, We'd say, okay, we're actually going to approve what two hundred eighty thousand. Is that that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. And then it just becomes part of the annual appropriations as we go through the budgeting process. So we're looking at this approximately two and a half year design before we start construction. Yeah, there's a lot. Whenever you have federal aid, there's a lot. It used to be federal aid projects. You could get them designed and start within three years. Now it's roughly four. It gets extended um, because of all the environmental work. And that and has um, the state, the SHPO, the State Historical Preservation Officer, a lot of federal requirements have to go through that to make sure you're not tearing out Indian burial mounds and that sort of thing. So yeah, design processes with federal aid is very long. Scott, I have a question mm -hmm. on that amphitheater. Have you designated where that's gonna be? That's twenty. That's twenty thousand to do the concept to study the concept of. It'll be integrated with the trail on that hill where the trail comes down from the business park. We have a strip of ground. Is there any way we could show that? Would it come out? Business park, yeah. And so that hill, through while we were working through issues with the trail, preliminary design and concept. Um, it became apparent that it is very conducive to an amphitheater, plus the fact that it's a federal aid trail. The hope is with that location that you, the way the federal government works, would you have a really good idea that integrates with other federal money that's already been spent? The chances of you getting federal aid for the amphitheater really jumps up. Now, it won't be necessarily transportation federal aid, but it could be from some other agencies. That I can't figure out where. Essentially, it'll be yeah. out by the Wellness Center. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, let's stay at this large view. So, the trail will start up here, and that's changing a little bit. Some of it's going to get picked up as this develops, and, and it'll drop off from the federal aid program. But basically, the meat of it will follow down this strip of ground that we own, the town does. This is where we have major power lines coming in. We have major water lines come in that, can, that feed the town from the water tower and the substation here. And then right here is where it hits Fall Creek Drive. Here's the, as you go out of town, there's the trailer park. Then the trail will go along here till where the old sewer plant is. Mm -hmm. Why can't and I remember this? Yeah. Right? Sure did. And there was a bridge there. That bridge has been taken out. So, but it makes it also a natural location to put in a new bridge because the abutments, the way the stream is already set, the, the putting in the new abutments will be easier. And then it just naturally crosses here at Taylor Street. And that's going to be set with that old iron bridge that's been sitting out there for 
20, 30 years. <laughs> Those things don't rise. Um, so anyway, then this part, then remember we bought this triangle right. property, right? So, so anyway, and then the trail goes along here and this will be the, I don't, the cross section is probably going to be, we're going to widen this, but there'll be share, a share lane with the bikes and traffic through here, widen sidewalks, come up here to Main Street and then go all the way up Main Street with widened sidewalks up to State Street. That's the federal aid project. Of course, next extension will be to come up here and into the park, and up here up Fountain Avenue. Elm Street's being reconstructed with brick and it'll be used as much, I think pedestrians will use it as much to cut over here to Fountain Avenue. It's gonna really be nice there. That will have a sidewalk added to it. So it fits into some other things that we wanna do. But if you look at this hill and you look at the slope and the way it faces the town, the fact that in the evening, the sun's to the back, we had Manning engineers, uh, landscape architect come in and go, hey, what do you think about if we put an amphitheater here? Because the community's been asking for that. And so he came back and said, because it's picnic seating, you can build an amphitheater somewhere down here, you could have some permanent seating, but then the rest is picnic seating, and there's not, it was shocking, for enough for 10,000. Yeah. So the next question is where will we park everybody? Well, we started adding it up. We're not that far off. You've got parking up here. We have the triangle parking, the triangle park. It can be used for parking. Um, this road, this we own this ground, and we think eventually when Harry's Way gets well, we know this is what we do. Harry's Way comes down to here, we'll turn this road into basically a trail that'll connect probably most likely soccer here. And if you look, that's right across from the golf course. So all of a sudden, like everything integrates. It's just this sort of luck of the Irish, right? Did uh, did you know that Dr. Phil Bean passed away? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, there there has been some other questions. We we also the town has bought a stage, right? That's shared by the park in the town, and that can be now used for smaller events. This also doesn't preclude us from having a small permanent stage like somewhere in the park. One of the things that that got us thinking about moving it out to here was the fact that some, some of the feedback that we got from people is why the heck do you want to spend a lot of money on an amphitheater when you have a railroad track that runs right through the middle of it and it would interrupt um, the concert or whatever's going on. So anyway, that 20,000 is for that concept. You did approve that last week or last month. Two months ago, whenever it was we met. So between the soccer parking and whatever, if we start adding up all the possibilities, we get pretty close to that being feasible. Did you have anything you remember from we had Shelbyville come in, talk to us about Rushville about what we had done, what they had done. Is that about comparable theirs? size to the amphitheater you're talking about? What they did? Theirs isn't necessarily an amphitheater. Theirs is just like a large space with uh, a stage. It doesn't really have like sod cut stairs or seating necessarily. It's very like freeform, which is the design for them like, to be able to use it multiple things and host a small event as well as a large event without making it look more or overflowing, which is nice. We really talked to them more about programming and how they get their business community to support uh, their their concert series was really kind of well. They had more to say about it, but um, and how it seems like it's going really well for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It's really, and it's one of those things where they kind of have it down to a science and they know where they get their volunteers and they know how they float that financially. Um, and it'd be a great project for Main Street or the local chamber to take over <laughs> um, on our behalf, not something that the town necessarily needs to do on its own. <laughs> Scott, on the 
on the business trail design is 250,000. That's probably what silver, silver work, surveying, yeah. landscape architect. What else does that include? That's about that's things. well the environmental and the um, historic preservation issues. That's about twenty three percent of the the overall project. I'm just curious. Yeah, which which actually is, I always count. I always say a third for soft costs. So the the soft costs on this are fairly reasonable. In fact, for a federal aid project, they're very reasonable. I was at, uh, about a week ago, I was at the Indiana School Board Convention in Indianapolis, and the mayor and town council president were presenters, and they talked about how they have transformed that town. It's really good. Rushville. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Shelbyville. Oh, Shelbyville. They were really good and talked about their, you know, what they were up against at one time and, and their vision and how they have worked together for years. But these guys were pretty powerful. They did a really good job. I think they'd be a good contact at some time, mm -hmm. you know, with, with what they've done with that pound and yeah, yeah. the park department. Really good. They were very good. So anyway, that's our ask. <clears throat> I guess my only question is, you know, looking at 25 and 26, projecting negative cash flow and kind of really dipping into the balance. Yeah. Um, so there are some things on there that may drop off and get pushed. I mean, I know that depot parking lot is 26. That's the one that's really shifting cash mm -hmm. flow on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has there ever been any conversation that's, with Mark with that's, Paul, who owns the former... My call. <clears throat> yeah, I've offered to buy that. Yeah. What do you, do you have any interest? He, he goes, everybody's offering, <laughs> making offers. And I just worry about, you know, look at that and just kind of. So, so know this, Dan. So, so we like to uh, appropriate what our revenue is. All right. And so, you know, like this year, it's 220 plus the 67th Street, so 280. So what'll happen is, as everything flushes out and we know more as it gets closer, then we'll bump things out. That's what we've been doing for four years, right? On your Elm, your Elm Street train. <laughs> out. So, um. I mean, the funds are there to be used. I get that, but I also want to be sure we, I hate to deplete the, the reserve fund too much because it limits our ability to be flexible when yeah. things and good opportunities present themselves. So with that depot parking lot, that will be a major purchase. But until up until then, so for right now, just know for, for probably for 20, Five is that it the appropriation in the budget for the RDC will roughly be what it is this year. I, I can't see much changing. Um, so that that negative cash flow is deceiving, and it's and I I figured you would ask about it, but a lot of that'll get bumped out, and then you have remember in the because you you do have about one point three million. I'd like to see what happens with the JD kids and how fast things start to move on that. Cause yeah. that, that could be quite substantial. Although remember, it's always going to be a year behind that, that revenue once it kicks in. Yeah. So good question. Yeah. So my thought, I guess, would be to, to focus on the, the request for 24 and, you know, for like BPT design, for instance, not approve 50 and 200,000 for years in advance and just look at those in that current year. I, I would go ahead and let's do the 50 for this year. If you want to wait on the 200, that's that works. But the 50 would probably because we need it because this could be an ongoing process and we need to just know that we're gonna it's okay to do that 
right for because we'll be into the design. So do you you'd like us to do the thirty? If you want to pull back, let's do thirty and fifty. Right. Of course, I like the two hundred too. Yeah, I get if you want to hold back. And I'm sure we'll want to do it at that time. I'm just thinking, like as far as being disciplined and looking at it mm -hmm. in the in the year when we. That's like you said. I mean, that's that's right. well off into the future. A lot of things can change. I think so. If you look at Broadway Drain, um, that's in front of the fire station. That that may get bumped out a little bit, or we may decide that we can substantially complete that with stormwater money. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, to not have to use our C. Uh, so, EPT designed for. 30 for 24, 50 for 25, amphitheater fees of 20, Tyler Martin easement of 4,900. Um, you've already done, you've already approved the amphitheater. Okay, that was approved last time, right? Yep. Yeah. What, what, we, what we have to approve today, and, and the comp plan, we're going to spend 35000 in 2025, but we'd like to do that because that's, that's going to be going right at the beginning of the year. Um, we're in October already. And then the town hall repairs, which is 8,900 comp plan, 424, Tyler Martin survey, $4,900, 424. Okay. All right. What, what does everybody think? I think it's a good deal. Yeah, you do it. Do I hear a motion to uh, approve the set expenditures? Motion. Second. I'll make a motion and take a second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Um, okay, so you got that, that it was 30 and 50. Okay. If you do want to go into more detail, I forgot to mention this. In Behind this is is four pages. It's a detailed report of this. So if you want to see what's been expended already, um, that's a good place to look. All right, that's okay. All I had. Thank uh, you. Good questions. Are there any uh, under new business? There are other projects. Anything else to discuss there? Um. No, I think I think we got it. Okay. For, at least for the end of twenty four, things Sounds will flush out a little bit as we go into twenty five. Great, exciting stuff. All right. Is there anything else for us to consider today? Anything you guys want to discuss? For me. All right, I guess with that, we'll uh, hear a motion for adjournment. A motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, next meeting will be November 7th, 530.